Welcome to the ITM Podcast. This is episode 200 of the ITM Podcast, the official Boston Red Sox podcast of CLNS Media, brought to you by Prize Picks the exclusive daily fantasy partner of the CLNS Media Network. I'm Joey Capone. That's Scott Neville. And the Boston Red Sox sweep the Pittsburgh Pirates. How are you doing, Scott? Good. Yeah. I mean, they just got we got to keep those boys on the road. They hate playing at home. Scott, these are two different teams we're talking about. They are now 10 and 3 on the road, correct? 10 and 3 on the road, 3 and 7 at home. Mhm. Uh, the boys hate Fenway. Uh, it might be something. Might be something there. I'd assume if I had to get you know throw a guess out there, they probably heard what happened with me in the Red Sox media, or PR, you know, when not being able to get credentials all the time, and you are having to wait till Sunday to get that first you know credential. So they probably were like, "Screw these guys. We'll, we're not even gonna try for the for them." I mean, it, it, that's a big part of it. That's a big possibility. I mean, mm-hmm. the other thing uh, is that Liam Fennessy may, might not even have to be in the park. It might just be being uh, in the same city, in the same general vicinity of the ballpark. That could be doing it. You're looking confused. You don't know what I'm talking about, do you? I, so I've seen these tweets. Yeah. I don't know. I'm trying to figure which, where is he? Like, in the, is he an over the monster guy? Be, be uh, pot on Lansdowne. Pod on Lansdowne. Who is that affiliated with one of those or no? Is that a just a podcast? Like that's just a podcast. Okay. It's a fan podcast. Uh, but he's he's like, you know, a standalone account as well. Good account, good follow. Uh, and the Sox are winless when he is in attendance. Uh, and they are um they have a three hundred winning percentage uh when they are in uh his city. So uh that could very well be a part of it. I don't know. This team looks like different brands of frustrating often, um, mm. but hard to complain about a sweep. Hard to complain about a sweep, and that's not what we're here to do. We're going to be excited this episode. Do you understand? It's episode 200. It's our bicentennial. I've been doing this show a bicycle. for so long. I've been doing yeah. this for so long, and it's good to get to 200 seemingly so quickly. I feel like I, you know... I feel like my first episode as a co-host was was just a few weeks ago, and now here here I am at two hundred. Well, that's that's why we've been putting out ten episodes a day, so that we could get here to this milestone. Uh, or you can just record one and chop it up into ten different episodes and release it like that. That's actually um, we did call that, that for the, a year. We call that the Odyssey Special, is what we call that. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, yeah, but I think I think at some point, oh, we'll we'll reminisce and and whatever and look back on our favorite moments scott because i know early mm-hmm. on those early days wow you have some favorite moments i'm excited to hear them i know you have a list we have a top 10 uh itm first 100 episode moments list from scott coming up at the end of this show so stay tuned for that uh, i mean interviewing cora right off the rip was just such a treat for me like first want- episode of the new show and it was just like it was fun for me you know i you know mm-hmm. i just didn't know how this was gonna go just took the job over there and and you know to get cora for him to ask and be like i want to be episode one was really special for me i want your favorite uh joe moments actually is what i was looking for i was thinking more like you give me your top 10 moments like i want you to directly quote things that i said like ex- like oh. word for word i want to hear it okay. exactly and like your favorite bits that I came up with, your favorite moments that you're like, oh, I was driving, I almost crashed my car. I was laughing so hard. Or like yeah. you know, people constantly say, I still get DMs every single day saying, you know, this pitching preview saved my life. I was on the edge. I didn't know what I was doing with my life. I didn't know where I was going. I just felt aimless. Mm-hmm. I felt like I couldn't find joy in anything. And I just, I, I remembered what joy feels like because of the pitching preview. So if you have a story like that, if you want to share that, I think that would be a great contribution. No. Uh, oh, well, don't. you can rack your brain a little bit. I bet you can find yeah. something in there. No, I can tell you I don't, but yeah, go ahead. You want to know something shitty? Not even shitty. Well, it's shitty. 
five minutes into the show. Am I going to say this five minutes into the show? Whatever. Uh, I gave somebody a chance. I'm not going to say who. He's going to rename, remain nameless. I gave somebody a chance to come on episode 200 like he directly asked to. Mm. And he's not available. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. That's a shame. Yeah. Somebody who was like, episode 200, I got to come back. I mean, come on. Oh. And I was like, oop. And I was like, ah, no shot. Ha, ha, ha. Rib, rib, rib. Buddy, buddy, buddy. And then was like, hey, episode 200's here. Like, ah, it doesn't really work for me. So um, whoever that could be, he's not coming on. So if you came here to hear him, first of all, I, I would You're guess you haven't listened in a few weeks. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Yeah. How's that? That's an insider info. Don't tell anybody that, you guys. That's that's That stays between us. That's a shame. I still haven't uh, really talked to him about this since since then uh other than when he you know told me he was leaving but hard guy to get a hold of eh. for guys you i guess ah uh, yeah i mean I, hey phones were two ways that's on me as well i just assumed i'd see him on the field or something but you know i, I figured you know opening day i'll be there but then i wasn't oh, that's right you weren't there uh, i couldn't make it that day I no, you could have made it. it. I think they didn't invite you there, right? Isn't that there was, was a scheduling conflict. It just wasn't my schedule that was the conflict. Their schedule was full of other media people. Who didn't show up. Who, yeah, who didn't even show up. They're like, yeah. we have to make and sure Greg Bedard can get in the door. Right. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it doesn't even cover the team. But hey. Mike Felger, he has to have a credential if he shows up. Look, this happened weeks ago. I've talked about it like six times. We're not going to keep harping on this. No, we're I, not. Obviously, I'm, I'm going to keep bringing it up. Is that what you think? No, I'm fine. Obviously, I didn't even. I came into today. I barely even remembered it. I wouldn't. Even, I never would have brought that up. You haven't been thinking about it a lot or anything. No, I'm fine. That didn't do damage. I'm fine. Do damage. Remember those years? They probably would have swept the Pirates, it's, too. <clears throat> this is not uh, an original take. I guess it kind of is. I'm not the first person to say something similar to this in the Red Sox space. But something this week just really hit me. I don't know. A lot of 2018 edits that I'm seeing over on TikTok. They just got you thinking about how possible it is to still be rocking with that core. It really does. I know it's it's not worth like diving into the nitty gritty of it at all, but it's seeing these lineups that have come out like this week and seeing like six years ago, it's not that long ago. Like, look, JBJ, his time would have been done. Andrew Benintendi, not the same guy anymore. Very bad. A couple other guys that are still kind of those guys though. Cool. And it's I don't know. Just uh just just a little tough seeing that stuff and then seeing these lineups that my goodness. They just keep getting worse. And I think it's safe to believe they're kind of going to stay worse for a little bit. There's more bad news. I don't know if you saw, did you see the bad news? Did it involve an abdomen, as it usually does? Yeah. 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 I know. I Yeah. I saw a bunch of abdomen stories, so why don't you tell me? Remember how uh, Bobby Dahlbeck was supposed to be the first baseman of the future? And he still yeah, might yeah. be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, um, remember that other guy who came up like right behind him and they were like, this guy's actually like one of our top prospects. Like we think he could actually be the first baseman over Bobby. And people were like, why do we even need him? We have Bobby. Remember him? Yeah. The kid from Florida, first round pick just storming the through the yeah. system right now. Moose. Yeah. The moose. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's him. Got hurt. Got hurt. Uh, yeah. I think it was actually five out of seven days in a row. There was bad Red Sox news. I think it was right around there. 
Might have been four out of I'd seven. I'd be days. surprised that there were that there were two good ones because I mean, even I'm sure even on those days there would have been some report like Nick Pavetta is not going to be ready when he's eligible to come back. Like that that kind of yep. stuff is you know maybe yep. not headliner news, but not great. No, no, yeah, Tristan Cassis on the ten day everybody, uh, and by ten day you know what that means. It means more than that. probably a lot longer than ten days. Uh, now here's the thing about Tristan Cassis. I love Tristan Cassis. You love Tristan Cassis. I'm speaking for you. I don't know if you've ever said that out loud, but I'm speaking for you. You love Tristan Cassis. Oh yeah. You at home love Tristan Cassis. We all do. And one of the things that we all love about him and the media loves about him is how candid he, he just, he doesn't talk like a player. He talks just like a dude talking, but in these Eloquent. moments, yeah, yeah. But in these moments, that eloquence is, uh, and that straightforwardness is really, uh, it's, it's stunning. It's stunning. Cause you don't expect to see a guy say, quote, I'm in a lot of pain right now. <laughs> like you just don't yeah. expect that when they're like, Hey, how you feeling? How you, you expect, Oh, you know, uh, managing a day to day. Luckily, you know, we we got a great training staff here, and uh, you know, just trying to work through it. I obviously, want to get back out there as quickly as possible. So, uh, you know, just uh, doing my thing. You know, feeling better every day, and uh, putting the work in, and hopefully, I can be back out there you know, as soon as possible. And nah, instead, he, Cassis he is like, like, he's like that. I ripped something, or something. there's a tear at least. I I don't know if I'll ever be the same. I that hurts so bad. <laughs> yeah, Cass's agent is like running down the Fenway steps as he's seeing this on Nesson as he's like, no, I am, I'm fucked up for good. I think, this I think my spleen ruptured future physicals. This will come up. Like I know they want to extend me, but before they do, they're going to want to get a physical in because <laughs> this thing, hurt, this thing is, I don't know. I, it might, I might be done. I don't know if I'll ever be able to rotate it again. If a doctor says that I'm all right, I'm getting a second opinion because I am not all right. I'm not okay. And dude, in <laughs> in what shouldn't be shocking but is, Cora has been a little louder than usual. Basically, like the middle of last year, he decided like, I'm just saying what I think. Like, fuck yeah. this. Fuck this situation that I'm put in. I'm just saying what I think. Like, that's when he started saying shit like, Pablo Reyes is not an everyday major league baseball player. And then, like at the time, we were like, "Alex, that's your player, bro. What are you What are you talking about? You can't be saying that." And in time, I think we've all been like, "You know, dude, he's totally right. Like they, they're giving him nobody." And I mean, now it's just on another level. Obviously, he's coming to uh, the end of his contract. Like he doesn't give a shit. He's going to say whatever he wants. So he's been just more and more loose lipped. When he was asked, <laughs> "Is Cora concerned about a lengthy absence for Cassis?" Quote, yes, I am. Big right time. to the point. Yeah. Stunning. No, that's really bad. That's really, really bad. I am concerned. A second quote. <laughs> I don't know what that could like be. I think it's, you just get a read on a guy and his pain tolerance. Because, but I mean, so, like, I'm talking like type of injuries that they oh. could like there's a lot of like soft tissue like core it, like injuries you could have but like you know like with, with the story it was like okay dislocation could be a torn shoulder labrum like i guess you could have a break you had like a list of like short notes of like th there's like a few things you can guess here realistically yeah i don't even know this one's not one where i'm like ah oh, it's probably x well so I think this holds true uh, in this situation. It's, but the, it usually in, in talking about shoulders and elbows, uh, a one Mr. Dallas Braden, like it, one of his mantras, he like repeats a lot that uh, when Major League Baseball says a strain, that means it's hair. And that's not like, you know, that's, really? that, that's just like the truth. When they say a strain, that's a partial tear. And when they say mm -hmm. a tear, it's a full tear. So... To me, that's like that's drilled into my head now. Again, I don't know if this is true for you know abdominal issues as much as it is for uh, just shoulders and elbows. But I saw abdominal strain. I'm like, he tore a muscle in his or tore something, a partial tear of something. 
again, I don't know if that's true, but that's that word. I've like redefined what strain means in my head. So, um, well, technically, I don't even know, like but I feel are, like there okay. should be less imaging with like an abdominal injury, right? There's just less ligaments and tendons and joints and stuff going on. I feel like it should be like x-ray and physical exam. Like, I don't know. Flying to see a specialist, which he did today, just feels like what What else could they do? Yeah, I don't know. But the fact that, I mean, this was a lingering thing as well. They said that it started in the Cleveland series. You're muted. Which it, I'm muted? No, you're not. I'm so sorry. I muted you. Mm, I was going to say, I haven't touched a thing. Uh, didn't That's mute so, myself. So my bad. Yeah. Okay. So thanks for that. Uh, sorry, anyway. Um, yeah. Just, I don't even know. I just said it's been going on since the Cleveland series, I guess. That's that's not great either to hear. Did he say that? Yeah. I thought it was just felt that it. swing. It wasn't just that one swing. He had felt it like in the Cleveland series, but that swing did more damage. Why are we playing him if he's feeling something? If he's feeling anything? Well, I mean... Yeah, especially when you have that Pablo Dahlbeck corner and field ready to go that you can just plug in at a moment's notice. You just have that luxury of depth. Yeah. Why even? It's argue. This is arguably there's going to be days where you'd rather that lineup out there anyway. I mean, why? I guess. <laughs> I mean, I guess. I don't know. It, the entire infield is out, dude. The entire infield is done. Two pieces of the rotation, your hottest hitter and outfielder, and uh, all of your starting infielders. And your DH is sitting because he sucks. So, unless he's dealing with something, too. Yeah, yeah, they kept him out the whole... Yeah, that was... You're right. I forgot about... He, I didn't he even did think play, about Yoshi. He did play a little uh, in game two. I don't know if he started in game two. I don't remember. He had a nuke. He did. He had a bomb. It's weird because like he stinks, but he's also hitting a couple homers here and there. It's like I don't know. It's also hard to believe. Like I don't know if you have depth. If everybody's healthy on this team, I understand like sitting Yoshida because he's just not seeing the ball well. But I just have a tough time wrapping my head around sitting Yoshida when like the other option is to DH a catcher from Worcester. That's just not, it's that's weird. not an exaggeration. That sounds like a joke. Yeah. That's what they did. Yeah. No, it, it's weird because with Yoshida, the one thing I'll say is that when they did this last year in so far this year, every time they do give him two days off, he starts to like his swing, his launch angle is different. He starts to get the ball up instead of just slapping the ground every single time you can see it on a swing and miss just because he's angling his bat higher. He just has more juice, and maybe he's just not a guy that can play 162 games, which is so weird. I thought the DH was going to help him, you know. I asked David Ortiz if that was going to help. <laughs> you know, I thought I really thought that that was going to help a ton, and uh, it just really hasn't mattered at all, it seems. He's just as tired out there after, like, I mean, do we think it's that? I mean, I'd be stunned if it's being tired in mid-April. I, well... I mean, every time they give him these two-day breaks off, he he starts hitting the ball harder. Like his exit velocity is higher. Like it just it, I don't maybe I don't know what else it could be. If it, it just seems like he's sluggish, and then they give him a couple of days, and they just starts drilling the ball for like a day, and then he gets tired again. I don't know. I don't know. You can't you can't afford that. I mean, you can't afford any of this stuff. And if. Look, Rafi, there's still just no news on Rafi. He's taken BP today. I was going to uh, ask about, yeah, talk about that, because what are you, it seems like he goes from, this is going to be something he's going to be dealing with. He, oh, this might be a little more severe than we thought. Let's get imaging. He's out of the lineup for the whole series, and he's getting tests. And like a few days mm -hmm. later, they're like, ah, he's fine. And then like he, and then he plays like two days, and they're like, ah, still not fine. I mean, apparently earlier today, he wanted to be in the lineup for game three of this um, this series. He also he's allegedly the other day. 
And then the next day they were like, oh, he's actually hurt. He went from he went from I had to get pulled to and, and we're scared to net he woke up, he's fine, he's playing the next day. And then the day after that, he was getting MRIs. I'm I'm tired of it, I'll be honest with you. I'm so tired of like the pull him out of the game and then we're gonna sit him for a day. And then nah, he was just scared. He thought he thought it was something bad, but he woke up feeling better. He's all good to go. Actually, he needs to be put into a specialized medical machine to find out what's going on with him. Mm -hmm. Uh, Actually, don't even worry about the results of the MRI. He wants to play. Um, But actually, we're not going to play him. Actually, we're going to put him in the lineup Tuesday. He's good to go Tuesday. I'm not, I don't want another actually, but I'll tell you, I'm expecting one. I'm expecting... Tuesday morning to be like, actually, we're going to give him one more day. If if Devers is going to do any kind of long-term damage, again, we have no idea what this injury is or if, if you even want to call it an injury, if it's just something that's nagging, like, don't fuck anything up with him under any circumstances. I don't know. It's like, if the fu- if the team is fully healthy and this is August, and the team is like looking better than you think. Yeah, you play him, and you're like, "Look, bud, play through it." These are the dog days. We gotta, we gotta, you know, maybe push for a wild card spot. That's not what this is. That's not what this is. It's April baseball in a year where your team that didn't look great on paper is severely injured more than any other team. Like the actually stuff is driving me so nuts about Devers. I think part of the reason why they're, they've had to push some guys this year is just because there isn't even triple, like the guys in triple a aren't close to big league red. Like you saw what happened when you just had to throw David Hamilton at shortstop and it's just like decimated the team. And it's like you, they're getting to the point where like, we have to like throw out a lot. Like this still has to look like big league baseball. And we don't have, we can't just replace our whole lineup and and then be fine. And like, not even, not even winning. Just like, we're gonna lose by ten every night if we take out Devers when he has a little nagging thing and O'Neill when he has a problem. And now Casas, it's like they just don't even have enough backups for like they don't have nine backups. And I think that's the biggest problem they're having. And it's always the big guys that are going down this year. Emmanuel Valdez is the healthiest player in the big leagues right now. <laughs> Devers is the most injured. Tyler O'Neill yeah. is the second most injured. Kaz is, is right up there. Pablo is ready to go every day. Pablo is showing up ready. Can't beat him. And Valdez, like you said, if anybody should be getting hurt, it's Valdez. Throws himself around on a baseball field. He's like Eduardo Nunez 2.0. Just flailing around out there. He's all good. Man, he should be tearing stuff. He's so muscular. He should be. Every time he runs, he should rip something. Don't Not want him, him to. It just feels like he looks like he's on steroids. So... <laughs> Those guys usually get, you know, they, they usually pull some things. Not as him. Tyler O'Neill tends to do. Not yeah. this year. Obviously, this year was a very freak incident. But if you look at his history, that hamstring is that lower back. You know, we're real close to wearing those down as well. But we're getting reinforcements. Reinforcements are coming. Are they? O'Neill endeavors Tuesday. Supposedly. Yeah, allegedly. yeah. O'Neal is also Reportedly. expected to come back Tuesday. O'Neal, who also was an actually guy. He's totally fine. Yeah. Actually, we're going to sit him for a day or two. Actually, he's on the seven day. Uh, yeah, there were multiple, hey, no DL stint for this guy. And then DL stint for this guy. Whitlock. I mean, Pavetta is like the same thing. Where it was like, wasn't it originally like they weren't even, like the, the, the IL, I'm pretty sure, wasn't the original conversation. Then it was the IL. Now it's, yeah, he's not even going to be ready by the time. <laughs> that he's off. We want him to make two rehab starts, maybe seven. It's tough. Yeah. The 15 day for pitchers doesn't even exist anymore because of how slowly they ramp people up. Like if you just have the smallest ailment and the day later, you're playing catch, like pretty much Pavetta was like, he was playing catch almost immediately. Mm -hmm. They have to play catch every other day for a week. And then they got to throw, you know, bullpens one inning and then one and a third, one and two thirds. It feels like sometimes and with rest in between, and it's not helping them stay any healthier, you know, like the, the guys that, that in the past, they've really babied uh, with the rehab process, like Evaldi and stuff end up on the IL four different times. And 
So I get why they do it, but it also doesn't seem like it works super well. It doesn't really seem like anything we're doing in the injury department's working super well. No. Besides getting injured, we're doing that, that real well. Yeah, if the if the injured if the injury department was we got to fill up the department. We got a lot of beds in this yeah. ward that we got to get filled. Then yeah, the Sox would be the best at that. staffing. Yeah, isn't the problem. 14, I believe, we have on the big league IL, if if I remember correctly. That might not be updated, and if it's not, it's probably three off because they seem to be going down every day. Uh, the fact so that far, Cass so good has today. went down and it's the entire infield now, is that's silly. That's so silly. That your third baseman, your shortstop, your second mm-hmm. baseman, your first baseman, they ain't there. There's not there. Grisham, it's by the tough. way, don't know what, what's going on with him. He, he like has been in Worcester for a while, but he's played like very sparingly played five innings of defense, made a diving stop and a good throw. I saw it. He made a throw. Yeah. He got the out. I don't know. I mean, like his arm motion is what it is, but I'm just saying he, when you, you know, move your right, get up, throw to your left. Good play. Yeah. Not saying he's an all-star. I've been very much on that. He's not a great defender. Be ready for that. People think he's a savior. He's not going to be there. But he hopefully could hit, and hopefully he's coming soon because, again, maybe we could start using our utility guys on a utility basis instead of an everyday basis. Yeah, that would be cool. That would be cool. I I tweeted it this series, and I meant it, and I mean it now. Bobby Dahlbeck is your best defensive infielder, and that's just not that's just not a joke. That's simply just not a joke. He he is. If there's one guy who ball is hit to him, I'm like, he's gonna get that. It's Bobby Dahlbeck. And it obviously, will be Rafaela, but yes. Yeah. Yeah. Putting Rafaela at short, obviously, I think I think a majority of people were pushing for it. And yep. uh, I think, uh, I don't know if people, if it's what people expected. I think people might have been a little too high and been thinking. You know, Can you that, hear that these he was, horns right now? No. You got horns? You got horns going on up Dude, there? Dude, this guy is horning it up right there. Yeah, he we is. got a horny I'm guy outside. On main road. I'm sick of it. I'm real sick of this guy. What is he just out there on the main road honking? He's just literally, but like on a beat, like like honk, honk, honk. Like it's consistent. It's like mm. ready. It's like every do one you, and a half seconds. He stopped though. Do you think I it's like rock a car alarm? Car alarms do that. Car alarms do that. No, I uh, no. I just uh threw a rock at him and he I, he just stopped. There we go. You got it. Uh, speaking of uh, throwing a rock and uh, hoping for the best, I don't know what wow. that means. That's just a transition. I don't know. Yikes. Let's talk to our good friends over at Prize Picks. Prize Picks is America's number one fantasy sports app with more than 3 million members. It is the easiest and most exciting way to get on the action while you watch your favorite sports and players. You just pick more or less on two or more player stats and watch the winnings roll in. Prize picks is so easy to play. I can make my Celtic picks and make my entry in less than 60 seconds. Quick withdrawals and easy gameplay and an enormous selection of players and stat types are what makes Prize Picks the number one fantasy sports app. Celtics and NBA fans, you can get in on Prize Picks in 30 states across the country, including California, Texas, and Georgia. On Prize Picks this week, I'm selecting Jason Tatum to dish out more than five assists and his teammate Jalen Brown to have more than 22 and a half points. Download the app today and use code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Price picks. So let's get to these games a little bit. Uh, I don't want to break these things down all too much because I'll tell you this. This is just the God's honest truth. I love watching uh, Red Sox baseball. It's the thing that I live for. It's what I do, and it's the best part of my day whether or not I want it to be, even when it is bad and the team that's out there is not the team that I signed up to watch, I love watching Red Sox baseball. Does that mean I want to sit here with you and like talk about Manuel Valdez's launch angle and be like, no, he's really getting around on the ball. And like, you know, he's stopping being a pole hitter. He's using all fields. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. So uh, kind of light, light going through these games. Uh, Cora did say that game one, he called their best game of the season. Check that out. Do you, do you agree with that? <laughs> I kind of felt like, I guess. 
Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, they were they got off to a hot start and they didn't. No, because I mean, I would say the Rafaela era, like they, you know, they've played Everless games before, so. I don't know. It was nice to watch, like, the Red Sox play a team. Like, what it would normally be like to put this this dickhead's car alarm's going off again. Is it? I'm trying to listen. It was a car alarm, by the way. Yep, yep. It makes a lot more somebody, sense than somebody rhythmically honking, but... I'm not hearing it. No, it's not. I'm not getting it. You're not getting it? That's a shame. No, that sucks. Damn People it, are missing out. You guys yeah. are missing out. Anywho, Anywho as I always anyhow. say. Uh, uh, they are on a two-game errorless streak. Yeah, the other – oh, the other team. That's what I was going to say. That? They played yep. like us. And, yep. you know, they were they were making base running miscues. They were – they were. I, I will say the one thing that's not like us that's just extra stupid that we, that we haven't partaken in yet is mm-hmm. just the uh, mass amount of pitch clock violations and random violations in box. Like that's something yeah. that we don't do. Thank God. I'm sure we'll dive into it at some point. We'll pick a month <laughs> here. But okay. I, for now, that's like the one dumb thing we don't partake in. And it was nice to see that. It was nice to see a guy look at Ref Snyder with the ball in his hand as he was touching first base and go, mm-hmm. I have this. Not a particularly yeah, I got this. speedy guy and just get hosed and then we didn't like normally in that situation i feel like the middle infielder would just drop the ball like he would get there in time and he would just drop it like david hamilton hates catching the ball cleanly uh especially if it's like a stolen base or whatever so yeah it was cool to just see like the other team be stupid for once not that we weren't you know game one we made some mistakes too but for the most part they were the dumber team and that was cool i was almost worried to see them uh, being present for the box, the pitch clock violations, that we kind of can stuff. Do that now. Yeah, don't get any ideas, fellas. Don't yeah. get any ideas. Like, oh shit, there's some dumb baseball stuff we haven't done yet. <laughs> we love being stupid. We haven't we haven't tried that yet. It's like, guys, guys, that's not our game. Our game is uh, it's kind of getting fun. Picked off at second. Our game is taking third whenever you feel like it. Which. Taking second, I mean, Jaron Duran needs to stop going first move versus lefties. That guy keeps begging to get picked off. He's already got picked off once. And, again, they played even dumber than us. There were a couple of times where we would make a bad throw, overthrow, and then they would be like, let me take an extra base, and then we would actually recover and fix it and be – it was like a dumb off there. A couple, We had a couple yeah, of sparring yeah, matches yeah. that we that we were able to contest. But, you know, Jaron Duran gets picked off again, and they just can't get him. So he's safe. And then and then they balked too. And then so he ends up going to third just on stupidity at the end there, the game three. What was um in, in game two, there was a pitch clock violation that their manager like really half heartedly contested. You know what I'm talking about? No, it's not jumping late, in memory at all. Late in the game. I'm also Really trying to remember if this was the Red Sox game or if this is another game. I've been, I've been watching uh, other other teams. Not to say that I'm I'm how dare you cheating on y'all here. Yeah, I've been watching some some baseball. Uh, love watching good baseball, so I've been in pursuit. Oh, good of that. Yeah. You um, have to find that externally. Yeah, I, I last year my weird prediction for the year was that Cora gets ejected uh, a record amount of times, and uh, I think he tied his record. But this year, I mean the the um, McGuire one was like the only time where I was like, "Oh, is he gonna?" Like, I don't think I don't think it's gonna happen a lot because I think in order to get fired up, you have to have uh, a certain level of like <laughs> something at stake, and I just don't know. To no fault of Corazon, I just don't know if he has that at stake. I just feel like every time I see Cora, he's dumbfounded by his team. Every time they cut to him, he's just making the same face. That's like, what did you guys do? You guys did what? And like, good on him. Like he's praising his team. Like I said, and said game one was their best game of the year. Um, 
but he's got a foot out the door, bro. I don't, and I don't blame him. I think it's, I, I think as the year goes on, I'm just more and more inclined to believe that our time with Cora is coming to a close. I I will say with Cora, I agree. Like every time I see like an injury, something happen, I'm just like that. Just like I think the results of this season are going to be a huge factor for for what he does in the future. The only thing that makes me feel good is the fact that um he's so close with ownership. So like maybe that'll help. You know, but but I will say as much as you're saying, Cora, I agree. Like, first of all, there's not a lot of stuff. There's been, you know, just every time that Casas has ever gone to the plate, he's gotten screwed. But other than that, there hasn't been like it's not really been about the ums as much as it's been about like the shortstops, like not being able to field. And then you can't really get ejected because your own team or be like, it's just gonna run over to David Hamilton and then get tossed. <laughs> like I you know. Yeah. So I will say he's played I not played. Um they've played way better than it feels like. I'll give you – I was waiting. Mm-hmm. I didn't know where to put this in the show here, but I yep. just saw a J.P. Long stat. I'm really hoping you didn't see. Uh, I haven't. Okay, the Red Sox are on pace for how many wins this season, would you think? Gosh, what are they right now? Um, 13 they're and 13 and 10. Um, so that's probably – it's probably like 88 wins. 91. Wow. And we have a plus 18 win differential according to Red Sox stats and obviously every just stat sheet I could have just found. But that's like – if forever – like with Devers basically not playing this season, and even when he has played, he's only impacted a couple of handful of games. Yeah. You have Tyler O'Neill, who has been statistically like the best player in the AL, but every home run he has has been a solo shot. He's contributed to like 10 runs this year, and mm-hmm. he's been hurt. Casas didn't play that one. Yoshida has been a non-factor for most games. He's, I mean, there's two games recently where he's hit big home runs, but overall, and yet we're on a 91 win pace. Trevor story. I didn't even mention him. He just didn't get to do anything this year. No, no. And our worst got a half a game of war. Got a half a game of war. Yeah. Yeah. So good. Um, yeah, I don't know what you're – I want to hear your thoughts on that, but also I will also throw in the fact that our worst pitcher has like a 3 ERA starter. It's like I think Bayo has like the highest ERA, like 304. Yeah. I think <clears throat> – I'll uh, two things. One, I think it is genuinely hard for myself, and I'm going to speak for other people, I think some other fans as well. I think it's hard to get excited to watch a team that you – don't know. Like, I think mm. rooting for Bayo, easy. Rooting for um, Cutter, very, very easy. Cutter, Cutter's been unbelievable. He's the best pitcher in baseball right now. Those are very easy things to do. Uh, when your lineup is guys who you're not expecting to come through, coming through, like, yeah, the diehards are going to be like, damn, I actually feel okay with, Pablo at the plate or like, man, Willier's Willier is showing a lot of promise. Like there's the fans who are going to find some, something to bite in there. But I think it's just hard to one, get excited. And two, the bigger thing to stretch out longevity there, like to believe that this is like a sustainable thing, I think is a lot harder. Like, this is as bad as the injury bug could be. So it's hard to say like, what if guys start getting hurt? Like they are, they're all, all hurt, but, uh, there, there's all sorts of sustainability questions. Obviously the, the pitching staff looks incredible. How sustainable is that? And like, it's not to, not to look at a team that's, you know, on pace for 91 wins and be like, ah, they're not going to do it. But these guys numbers, tell you that's probably not a realistic thing to um to um project it's it's just not jp is so so good at putting out stats that make me feel okay and for for years i've i've looked at them the past two years the past two years i've looked at them and been like 
damn, this team has a shot. And I've just made the decision that this year it's going to, I'm going to have to see it. I'm, I'm just going to have to see it. And, um, I don't want to have the wrong tone about this series and about the show. I mean, they just swept the pirates. They just swept a major league baseball team. Is it, it's the Pittsburgh pirates, mm. but it's yeah. not, it's, it's certainly not the worst pirates team that I've ever seen that, you know, it's a pretty good one, pretty good start for them, but it's hard to believe that that's sustainable. I mean, do you? No, nah, I mean, I don't think they win 91 games, but at the same time, there is that world of like, and again, I'm, and I'm, I'm just so I've written about how they're going to be a last place team so many times just out of here we go again. Uh, but I will say, like, if if you're just looking at it from like uh, you haven't been here for the last few years and you're just taking a clear unbiased view and you're and you're just saying, OK, very, very easy argument to make that this will be the most injured this team has that will be this season. Right. Like, I think it's fair. Yeah. Like, that's you might point to that that pirate series and go. Obviously, every series we didn't have a story, but then it's like Devers wasn't available. Yoshida was kind of available, not really. O'Neill was not available, and then Casas only played like an inning or a game in an inning, whatever it was. And uh, you go and Pavetta, and then you look at that that point, and you're like, man, that was that was really when we had nothing. If the if people start coming back, and Devers, you know, because he's not Devers isn't typically a super injury prone person. The O'Neill no. thing is a completely like you can't re-aggravate you know his like his stitches in his head that was basically the biggest problem like you can assume he can avoid not re-concussing himself in baseball so like that's one you you feel really good about of all the injuries that are going around casas is a huge blow that one that one's tough and pavetta seems to be close-ish and grisham seems to be close-ish and ref snyder's back if if this team remains at close to full strength of what it is now like 80 90 percent of you know, obviously we're not counting on the people that are out for the year. I mean, you're saying, well, that was like the hardest part of the season for them. And they did, you know, 13 and 10. Could you, you know, stay on that pace? Probably. Now, if they have to, they have to keep playing definitely all their, half their games at home. Is that like a thing that you can't, you can't opt to play on the road? Cause that could, that hurts. Yeah. So I was actually looking into this. Do you want to guess how many games at Fenway they're going to play this year? Uh, hopefully like 40 dude it's more than double that get out how many games i swear to god they're playing they're playing 81 games at fenway this year isn't that nuts 81 how many games you play in a year 162 they play 162 games it's a lot of games man they play like almost every day yeah stupid i play like for a month and then i'd just be like oh my again you want me to go to the game again you know I've, i honestly i've thought before if they started baseball today like if major league baseball was like this brand new game that they just invented and yeah. they're like we got a we got a sport for you guys and you're gonna love yeah. it maybe um and they came out and were like and they're gonna play 162 times uh people would be like that's ridiculous that's We're, way too many. That's way too many games. Play 14 times. I would play 14 times, and I'd get it. I'd get the gist yeah. of it. Yeah, they have 30 games. I don't know. That seems like a lot. I'd have two seasons a year. I don't know. Are they playing on the weekends? Uh, they're not playing they're, on the weekends, are they? They're playing on the weekends, bro. They're playing oh on the weekends. Oh, my God. They're playing on the weekends uh, every weekend. And then, I mean, they get, a, they get like a, a day or two off a month, sometimes three. They got to get a union or something. Oh, they have one. They have one. They, they want to play 162. Union. That doesn't make any sense. No, but it's what it's the truth, though. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I would have said yeah, 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 I'll yeah. play. And the league twice. was like, maybe we could play less. And the union was like, no. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. It feels like I a, thought they put, I, I had no idea they put that. I, mean, I thought it was like, thought we were wrapping up here i hate to tell you i (laughs) i really hate to tell you this um they're about a third of the way or i'm sorry a quarter of the way to being halfway uh which is another way to say they're about an eighth of the way through Hmm. 
Well, we don't do shows in the off season, though, do we? So we, do we obviously will have that off. What the we hell? Do shows this in the is so ridiculous. We're you're going to be talking to me a whole hell of a lot. Yep. Happy episode two hundred, everybody. Thank you so much for listening along with us. Feels like I've been uh, doing two hundred. My God, I can't they, do this anymore. They can't possibly listen. I don't know what their record in general is like mm-hmm. over X amount of years at Fenway in April, but I feel like. April Fenway games are winless for both teams. They're just impossible to win. Like they they just shouldn't play outside in Boston in April. And I don't think they should I don't think the answer is p- put a dome over Fenway. I don't think the Certainly answer is not. play on the road until May. Um I don't think the answer is like get another ballpark. I don't think the answer is move them out of Boston. I think the answer is we got to make summer longer. So you fix think? the weather. I'm saying well, actually we're doing that planet. We save the planet, bro. What do you think about that? I think it's the I respectfully. I think we should be doing the opposite because it's a cold global warming, right? That's yo. Do we need to we pollute be not more? Recycling. Stop recycling. That's if you want to help the Red Sox win. Stop recycling. <laughs> I think that might be the answer. All right. I need everybody. Everybody listening. If you're in your car. Put it in park for a minute. Just run the engine. Just hit the hit the gas for me a little bit. Not like in a garage, though. Like, don't do no. that. No, no, do not do that. We need and we need downloads, everybody. We need downloads. Yeah, do right. We need the downloads. Your car in your garage. <laughs> we need to be polluted. Yeah, if we were polluting enough, we could get this team back on track. Maybe we can get like an oil company to sponsor this show. And ITM brought to you by Exxon. Oil. Yeah, and then dump their oil at like Fenway. Ooh. All right. Listen, I'm telling you guys, by 2028, if we can get opening day to be like 75 degrees, oh. I really, really like the 28 Who Red Sox. Who says no to chances. that? Who says no to that? Just in general. Who says Even no to that? Red Sox fan. 75 in April? Mm-hmm. 75 in March, March 28th, opening day, and it's 75 degrees and sunny. That's you what I'm wear saying, bro. Everywhere. Can you picture it? But, Can you picture it? Yeah. I'm feeling I'm feeling a little sunny myself right now. You would have you literally are. You're in a lot of sun right now. I don't know what's going on there. But, uh, I lost sun right now. It, it's not sunny the even bad, a little. The bad news am. there. Sorry, go on. I was just going to say it's way sunnier for you. But the, I give you a bad yeah. news. You'd have to wear a mask everywhere. But we've already done that for years, so some of us did. We've done that. Yeah. Some, oh some no! Did. I got to wear an oxygen mask around. Okay. They could go All seventy-three right. at home. I think you'd be like, fine, I'll wear a mask. If you were at the game, you know, people do like the rally caps and stuff like that. Yeah. If they were like, put a mask on and they win this game, you'd be like, yeah, I. Yeah. Everybody All turns their masks. Mask on? Everyone turns their masks upside down in the ninth. Yeah. 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 Yeah, but then they masks? actually get sick because it's not right. Well, and we've done serious damage. Uh, do you want to? Do you want to feel great, or do you want to see Roman Anthony walk off oh. the Las Vegas A's? Perfect. I will say with the scheduling thing, I don't think you necessarily need to like change the entire environment. But yeah. I will say no? what they did. <laughs> maybe, I don't know. Maybe I'm on the fence. Uh, <laughs> but I think. What we did this year made a lot of sense. It nothing infuriates me more when we do an opening day at Fenway against like the Dodgers, and then it's it's in Boston, and then two or three games get rained out, and it's like, why we had a solution? If 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 we were picking these two teams to play each other, why why are we doing the? I mean, it's it's March. It I feel like we should have known what was going to happen. We have a lot of data on March. I don't know. If, like we can go back and look. Shouldn't there's, come as a surprise to MLB every single year when they're like, I don't know why we had the New York, uh, we had two New York series against you know Oakland and Arizona, and uh, for some reason by putting it in New York there were delays, and then we had you know obviously we had uh, Tampa come down to Boston, uh, come out to Boston, and that didn't work out either for some reason. Yeah. Yeah, very weird. Very. Weird. I mean, the thing is, I mean, I think the Sox. I think it's been a couple of years now where they they always start on the road, and that's that makes sense. Makes sense when they start on the road in 
in New York, it doesn't make a whole bunch of sense. That, cause that, that happened in 22 and opening day got rained out. But, uh, I mean, this uh, 10 days on the road just, like, makes a ton of sense. It's also a terrible way to start the year. But let's say you go, like, I don't know, 7-3 and three on that road trip. You come home feeling pretty good, and you probably do well in your first I... homestand. Right? Wrong! Wrong. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I think we did a good job of breaking that down game by game. I think you guys got the gist, right? <laughs> I think we nailed it. I mean... I don't even think we would even see the games after that recap. I do got to say this: the one downside I haven't, I hadn't thought about till right now. I'm still on the environment thing. The cool one downside warning. I hadn't thought of till now is like going to Texas in July. Oh, would be about 170 degrees. Well, how does China do it? Where it's just China, but it hasn't affected us. Maybe we could just do it to Boston. Hmm. Put a dome over Boston. Pollute the shit out of it. I think we got something here. We got something that works. Maybe we need some listener help, but... Yeah. Maybe like a Pollute Boston. All right. Pollute Boston merch. All proceeds go to (laughs) our efforts. Pollute. Fill in the Fenway seats with Pollute Boston shirts. And then we'll, all of our proceeds will go to some sort of mischief. The t-shirts are like smog colored. They're like the yeah. gross brown. We got people for that. Pollute Boston. Go to PolluteBoston.com. Dad, if you're listening, you're a graphic designer. Maybe let's get something going. Let's get something going here. Oh, uh, yeah, I, I, I think they, they got to take advantage while they're on the road. Winning Cleveland. Winning Cleveland. Yeah, they should win it on the road. Yeah, good point. Good segue. <clears throat> One other note on uh, in terms of breaking down game by game, Devin Marrero was in the studio. What did you think of that? That was weird, huh? Very weird. Yeah, I mean, you like to have Red Sox legends in there. And yeah, he was a yeah. top prospect. And then he played, was he on the 13 team? No. No way. He was like 16-17. Uh, Around there. I don't think he let's see, when did when did Devin Marrero? Fifteen. Fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Yeah. Just like Wow. The, Nailed it. Just the the rise up to well not quite. You didn't say fifteen, two for three, sixty seven percent. That's a D plus. Um well he actually yeah. 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 He only put a hundred and five games, games. twenty five games in in fifteen. Yeah, well only thirteen and sixteen, so well now well. we're getting really into murky territory here. 109 games of Boston feels like enough to give you a, a, a show. It's insane. He played 109 games in Boston. He had a 49 OPS plus betted <laughs> 208 with the 259 on base, a 568 OPS, a grand total of five homers. And they were like, you know who the people have been missing? You know who was like an awesome like fan favorite back in the day, like media presence, like Brock Holt type? Yeah. This is his teammate, Devin Marrero. The funniest thing about Devin Marrero will always be that Mookie Betts was pushed off of shortstop in the minors because they had this guy that they thought was really going to be somebody. And so they were like, you can play like second or outfield, I guess, because we have this. You're not going to – obviously, you're not going to beat out Devin Marrero at short, so – Right. Don't even try would be my advice because uh, he's way better. So we're going to put you in like right field or something and, you know, you could pick grass. But uh, that's the guy that we need at the top of the lineup every day. Yeah, putting Mookie in right field is so funny in retrospect to be like, I don't know, go mm-hmm. in fucking right field. I don't know. Let's go out there. Jackie will teach you how to throw. He said he promised. <laughs> that you can learn how to do that, Marcus. <laughs> yeah. That's so if you funny. can contribute at all. You're too skinny to be here. Uh, draft and develop, baby. Draft and develop. Hell yeah. That's the Red Sox system, baby. Come on. Draft, develop, trade. I'm not I'm not getting re upset about it, but I am getting You said we were doing a positive show today. I'm up I'm happy, bro. What are you talking about? You said no no happy things. Um we should pollute the city of Boston. That's like a, that's just like an idea. That's not like one way or the other. 
Um, all right, something happy. If we pollute Boston, it'll get warmer. True. Right. Um, something Glass happy. Apple. Something happy. Maybe Cam Boozer, uh, 31 year old carpenter that, that, you know, big made his debut. That's happy. Just talking about I that. love that Boozer's mustache. Yep. How about that? I love that. It looks is the story. It, listen, it, the story, as much as they're great, I like the, you know, the mm-hmm. Boozer, uh, the, 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 the Schreiber stories, as much as they're great, they, they make me a little sad because they make me feel like, damn, like there's no shot I could get back out there. Right. And it no, just makes me sad when I re realize, no, no, it's just like another reminder of like, wow, this guy thought he had no chance and then he still did it and you still can't. And you actually can't. Yeah, well, because when he retired, he was still throwing. Like, he could throw 90-plus. I could. At your baseball 90. Throw nope. the ball. Nope. Okay, all right. Yeah, that's true. All right, you walked it back a little further than I thought. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You're right. You I'm know, sure you could throw a ball. You know what's funny is uh, Sebastian starts T-ball uh, this this weekend. Wow. Okay. So, uh, you know, we've been we've been swinging a little bit more. We've been going. You know, we, we still have, like, the weekly baseball camp and whatever. And he's he's been going, and I've I've been trying to get you know into a little better shape to be out there and play with him a little bit. You know what I mean? Not play t ball, but you know, practice with him. Nah, you wouldn't make it. And uh, I easy now. Watch it. And I was uh, stretching, right? I grabbed a bat, like a real bat, wooden bat, my Loomer Loney signed bat, and I started taking some hacks. First hack, Scott. I heard cracks up and down my entire skeleton. I heard a crack in the back of my neck that I think might have been my skull. It was high up there. It was just, Mm. it was every every joint at once was like. What was that again? It was like. Just head to toe, bro. It was like. I think I muted you that time. Try that again. It was like I went to the chiropractor in an instant. It was like a three-second chiropractor appointment, except I left feeling worse. So the chiropractor. Uh, and, uh, yeah. So all that is to say, I'd love to play in the media game this year. Buck, if you're listening, I would love to get out there. So, Or, or Cora, I I would if you're do. listening. If you need a guy, you don't want to you don't want to waste someone's years. You don't want to pull up somebody from AAA. You don't want to, you know stunt somebody's development i'll fill in put me in i think i can do damage in the media game you know what's weird is that uh the me- the media like usually looks pretty damn good really yeah i'll never say this to his face um but Catillo has like a sweet swing it's very weird he's like like he swing like he swings a bat and you're like oh you had a dad you had a father oh <laughs> yeah yeah Right. That's yeah. often what I might, yeah, that your yeah. brain goes to, whether they had a dad or not. Uh, yeah. I, <laughs> you never um, see somebody swing and you go, oh, you didn't have a dad. No, I, I, I guess no. I just never connected the dots there. I, I mean, it makes sense. What you're saying makes sense. <laughs> That's insane. You said that to people? I mean, no, you think it. You go like, oh, okay. someone didn't have a Good. dad, huh? You whisper it in the yeah. dugout. You're like, wow. Wow. Ugh. I've seen him run and it wasn't major league. I'm not saying he's an athlete. Mm. I'm saying he, you know, someone someone showed him how to swing a bat pretty pretty clean. That's all I'm saying. All he I'm saying. wants to come on. What should we what should we uh you want me to call should we just him right get now? him on to try and see if we can get him to get us in this in the big the media game? Should I call him right now? Is that how you think he wants to come on? Probably not. Mm-hmm. Well, whatever. We'll save it. Not right, calm. We're not. What do we even say to him? Just ask him if we can. Did get you have a dad? <laughs> you... I'm gonna ask. Two I'm questions. gonna guess. Two I'm questions. gonna guess you had a dad, right? Yeah. Two questions. We'll save it. We're gonna go guestless on on episode 200. <sighs> you call him. All right. Call him. Uh... We can get him on here. Yeah. Yeah. He asked, he actually asked us to come on. So 
I don't know. We're, we're thinking about it. Um, it's just not really much I'm, to like talk to. It can't be about with the Red Sox. I'm not trying to do that. No, he yeah. he tweets everything that he knows. Anyway, I'm not gonna. We're not gonna get him on here. And be like, so what are you hearing? Fucking, I told you guys. I what about the trade on. deadline? Yeah, yeah. We'll ask him about that. Um. Ugh, man. I'm trying not to get um all too worked up about stuff, but man, it's tough to be on uh it's tough to be on Red Sox Twitter when things are this weird. It is a weird time to be on there. Things are mm-hmm. divided. Things are divided in a lot of ways. Uh not a not a big fan of being I'm tweeting a little bit less and uh it's it's just tough to scroll through there. I think I, I'm going to be more active on there, but in terms of like scrolling through, man, it is absolutely. Bro. I'm just going to turn noties on for like everybody in the media and then never open the app otherwise, because it's, it's, it's just, I don't know. I'm so tired of seeing people just like argue with each other over nothing. Like it's, just a little debilitating out there, folks. We're trying to have fun. We're having trying to watch some baseball, trying to have a good time, trying to pollute Boston. Yeah. Uh, is that so mm-hmm. bad? We got movements. We got movements here. We're trying to do stuff for the greater good. Hell yeah. The greater good. Warm up this town. Um well, that'll probably do it, right? Oh no. Probably get out of here on we what? Got series MVP. Which you love to forget about. We got series MVP. I, I think this might have been a genuine mistake here. That one actually kind of was a genuine mistake. Yeah. Uh, I got to direct go the show. Uh, I don't have any stats, but I'm going to say Willie Abreu. Yeah. You're going to say Willie Abreu? Do you want mm-hmm. some stats? Hit me. Hit 583. Hit me, just okay. He hit 583, 667 on base. Slugged a thousand. That's a sixteen sixty seven OPS for those without a calc. For those new mm-hmm. in the chat, calc is short for calculator. Um, not a bad pick. Not a bad pick at all. Uh, really, the only other contender there uh, would be Rob Ref Snyder. He had three thirty three, four twenty nine on base, a twelve sixty two OPS, <sighs> four ribbies for Willier Abreu. A bomb, two doubles, seven hits, three walks, only one strikeout, three extra base hits, and 15 plate appearances. There is another fella who is worth mentioning. 20, there's but like 25 more. More than that. There's a lot. The no, IL. there's a. Sorry, you're right. There's a lot of other guys on this team. Yeah. Um, but there are two other guys. Two other guys really worth mentioning. Sorry. Mm. Um, one of them uh, only had one hit, but it was a big one. Uh, it was a double. He walked twice, only struck out six times. Uh, so that's an 091 average, a 231 on base, a 413 OPS. Uh, and that's Bobby Dahlbeck. So... Um, obviously yeah, worth, so worth contending, it. worth nope. mentioning, worth thinking about. If, he if also got, wants. he got three strikes easily in that walk. If you watched it. Uh, well today he struck out on three balls. So if you yeah, want, no, I'm saying you destroy the, the union, you hate union workers. Is that what it is? You hate blue collar workers. The umpires are trying to put food on their family's tables. Yeah, some of them I do, I'm sure. Bob is in real running if you want to submit a vote. Uh, click the button on you your screen. you got to pick Willie or Brady. I'm not going to think about Bobby. Uh, Masataka Yoshida went four for seven, mm-hmm. which is 571, a 667 OBP. Uh, hit a bomb. It's an 1810 OPS, but only played in two games. Only had seven ABs. So, yeah, I, I'm not going to do that. I can't play a whole series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But 150 points higher in OPS than Willier, but five less mm-hmm. ABs, uh, yeah. half as many ribs. I think this is going to be a unanimous one. It's Willier or Bray. 
our first our first unanimous our first unanimous mm. one all right now that'll do it thanks so much for listening everybody have a great nope yeah i do nope what i get i'm starting to get really frustrated by this it seems like you know how to steer the show everywhere mm -hmm. and then yep. right when we get to this point yep. you always seem to forget the missing ingredient and it's your segment it doesn't make any sense how this is the one you forget Joey, you goofball. You think I'm doing this on purpose, bro? I sometimes I do. I know you. Look, maybe I'm just frustrated right now, but sometimes yep. I do. I'm sure when I calm down in a few hours, I'm sure I'll be like, "That was just a silly <laughs> mistake that he continues to make every single show." But Joey, why would I be doing it on purpose, though? Why would I be doing? What, what do doing? you think? We just we just like couldn't find a way to introduce the pitching preview, so we had to come up with some new way to do it. So I'm just like pretending I forget it and letting you be like, Joey, you forgot to do it. I, may, I don't know. That's a conspiracy theory that's probably on the Reddit, you know, the Reddit like pages. Reddit. Yeah, sounds like a Reddit thing. But yeah, we could do the pigeon preview. Oh, okay, folks. It is three games in Cleveland. Game one is going to be Tanner Houck versus Ben Lively. Tanner Houck is coming off a pretty good start. Nine innings, three hits, no earned. That's actually his best start of the season, believe it or not. And that one actually came against the Guardians, Scott, which is the team he's going to be playing in this game. Oh, my God. That brought his ERA down to 135 through his first four starts. His only four runs of the year came against the Angels in that ugly 7-0 loss, which, frankly, doesn't even count. Zero ERA for Hauk. Ben Lively is an American actress born in Los Angeles. Lively is the daughter of actor... Ernie Lively and made her professional debut in his directorial project, Sandman. She had her breakthrough role playing Bridget Vreeland in The Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants and its 2008 sequel to commercial success. She is also married to Ryan Reynolds. Game two is going to be TBD versus Carlos Carrasco. Tori Belinsky. Dinkins takes the mound in game two after being acquired from the Pirates. After further research, Cora's 5K medal was apparently not lost in the deal, leading people to wonder if perhaps this trade was made with a deal with the devil, perhaps to take everyone's health on the Boston Red Sox. People are asking. Carlos Carrasco is 37 years old now. He was placed on waivers by the Mets last year and is having himself a pretty fine start to this year. His longest start this season was the five and two thirds he tossed at Fenway last week, in which he allowed two runs on as many hits. Game three. It's going to be Brian Bale versus Tristan McKenzie. Brian Bale will be on the bump for this 1.10 p.m. first pitch. His third day game start already, Scott. In the first two, he pitched a combined 10 and two thirds and allowed three runs on 10 hits, striking out 11. This could be the start that ends the sleepy Bayo allegations. And Tristan McKenzie is just so cool. His numbers, not so much. Very up and down this year. Seattle and the Yankees have gotten to him, and he had good starts against the White Sox and the A's. Do you notice a trend there? Diving deeper into his stats, it looks like he might only be good against bad teams. In other words, dude sucks. And that is going to do it for your pitching preview. Scott, I have a confession to make. Okay. I love progressive field. I love Cleveland. I love Cleveland. Not this whole city, but I love the ballpark. I really do. I think it's like, um, not maybe not up there with PNC. Uh, people aren't going to be posting pictures being like, I'm in Cleveland. But uh, something about that ballpark is so cozy. I love that ballpark. That's interesting. Yeah, I think of that as just a park. I do like the left field. I like that uh, the video of LeBron James freaking out on left field and uh, the World Series. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Other than that, that's pretty much it. That's all I got. Beautiful field. Beautiful field. Progressive field. If you're not watching on YouTube right now, um, I kind of look like that scene in Oppenheimer when, uh, you know what I'm talking about, when he's having bomb. the flashbacks. Yeah. The bomb. The bomb oh. scene. Yeah. He's having the flashbacks. And, uh, yeah. Sorry, I was having myself a giggle at that. Uh, if you don't find yourself agreeing with me right now and you're like, progressive field. What are we talking about? Cleveland, dude? This guy likes the field in Cleveland. This, I, this guy does not know what he's talking about. This 
guy doesn't know what he's talking about. I heard saw somebody recently. Uh, hold on, hold on. Let me finish a thought. I'm so sorry. I'm all over the place. If you're feeling like that and you're like, "What is this guy talking about?" Watch this series. Watch this series. You're gonna you're gonna find yourself at the end being like, "Wow, I I enjoyed that ballpark. I had a I had a fine time there." And that's what I'm after in baseball. I'm after a fine and time. And if you watch it and you disagree by the end of the series, he's so confident that he's gonna let you pie him at Fenway Park upon that's sight. Not true. That's not true. That's not true. I didn't say that. You never have any that. fun with this show. You never. That doesn't even. That doesn't even sound show. like me. I wouldn't say that. I would never ask somebody to pie me. I. I just think sometimes we like to have fun with the show, and you prevent us from doing so. Put some stakes under this thing. I put I some, offer my car. What does that, for, what does that mean? Put shot. some stakes under this. What does that mean? Put some stakes on your takes. That should be a thing. Whoa. I I I offered my car for a call your shot, and then you said I don't even want the segment anymore. <laughs> Once I realized I might get a Tesla, I was like, I'm all good. We don't need to you keep doing this. You spend so much time at a gas station. That could really throw you off. You wouldn't know what to do. You'd have too I much love free the gas station. You know what's so funny is I had a closing thought that was about the gas station. And as I was writing it, I was like, I can't have another gas station take. <laughs> it's unbelievable. So, it's, 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 yeah, it's a pretty high, high percentage here. Um, you know, what's funny is, uh, uh, the, the internet likes to, uh, uh, the, the people talk, people talk, people talk, right? And being, uh, you know, taking, taking the, the, the chair here from Mr. Uh, Mr. P, as we call them, right? Yeah. Um, people, people share their thoughts, right? Show is new. People share their thoughts. People are like, oh, I like this segment. Oh, pitch and preview saved my life, blah, 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 all the things that people say. Mm -hmm. And then there are also just people who like don't have like much going on between their ears who like say things that are um, different than that. And um, somebody said, God, I don't remember the, the beginning of the context of the sentence, but they said like, um, I don't think Joey is a, <laughs> I don't think Joey is a big baseball fan. <laughs> and I was like that. Of all the things you could say to me, it's not like I'm not I'm not hurt by it. It just is so it's stunning, brother. What what do I I? This is the only thing I do with my entire life. I'm sitting here telling you how much I love Progressive Field. People are like, I don't know if he's that big of a baseball. Yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not. Yeah, I I'm more of a curling guy. Oh, you did say you tried to go into curling at Fenway. Uh, nope, that was hurling, bro. What's the difference, you know? I uh, well, uh, there's a lot of them. There's a lot of them. They're entirely different games. It's like saying what's the mm -hmm. difference between like bowling and lacrosse. They're just they're the difference is, I know those things. You don't know hurling? You've never seen hurling? It's kind of like mm -hmm. field hockey, lacrosse, but it's like physical. It's like really? a you know ball and net kind of game, ball and stick into a net kind of game. Obviously. Yeah, and that, I know curling. That's the extent of what I know. I think they Apparently, walk around with, hey, come on now. Come on now. Put those away. Put away the biceps. That's curling. I don't know curling. why they'd do that Fenway. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Uh, happy 200 to us. Scott, yeah. you got that list ready to go? Oh, man, yeah. So I started that list. And, uh, yeah, so, I mean... Obviously, um, number one Joey moment was just like that first time we went to Fort Myers together and uh, yeah. you getting your first credentials. That was kind of just a joy to watch you and um, experience that. And then, I, like I said before, there was the Cora interview. I thought Whitlock's was riveting. That was probably my favorite interview we've you done did? together. <laughs> you felt, like, you felt yeah. like it was riveting? I feel like he just brought in energy that no one else on the show has. Um, when, uh, gosh, oh, I'll give you a real one. Um, one of the funnier ones uh, was last year when I called you, what, right after a game. And I was like, hey, dude, um, do you want to interview Wade Boggs? And you were, I believe, it like Tasty Burger or something. And you were just like, you were like in line. You were like, what? And I was like, yeah. You want it? Do you want to do it? And you're like, yeah, yeah. And I was like, okay, cool. I'll let them know. Yeah, I answer. I think I answered on speaker. And I was like going from yeah. the Sox to the Bruins game. So I was actually with you, some yep. buddies. 
And yeah. so I got to answer like in front of people, just my mm -hmm. producer calling, being like, Hey, you want bogs tomorrow? Yeah. That was, that was pretty cool. I'm not going to lie to you. That was cool. That felt good. I didn't even know that layer of it. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. I felt, felt good. Felt mm -hmm. good. Every time you call me about uh, an interview, I'm with somebody or near somebody. I'm within earshot of somebody that I can brag to. So thanks for that. What was it for at Tease? Uh, I was on Fortnite. I was playing Fortnite with my buddy Chris. I was on headset. And I like, I, I, I was like, oh, hold on. Scott's calling me. And I put the headset down and then answered your call on speaker, kept playing Fortnite. And I was like, what's up? And you were like, David Ortiz, you want to interview him tomorrow? I was like, for real? You're like, yep. Yep, got him. We can get Poppy mm -hmm. tomorrow. And then, uh, yeah, just hop back on after. And I was like, please tell me you heard that. And he did. All right. I didn't know yeah. that I was making you look cool all the time. Yeah. Add me on Fortnite if you're trying to get, if you're trying to get wasted. Not, not right. like that. If you're trying to get, um, hammered, just nope. belligerently drunk. <laughs> nope. Nope. Add me on Fortnite if you're trying to get murked. Killed, if you, murdered. Yeah, if I'm you're trying to have a short game. If you're trying to I'm get murdered in. in real life, add him on. Fortnite. Actually, you wouldn't have to add me on Fortnite to, to die it by my hand. In fact, you, you would have to not add me. So keep playing Fortnite. If you see me out there, you'll know. You'll know it's me right away. You'll be like that. Right, because otherwise you'd be teammates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you want to get carried by Joey, Adam, metaphorically mm -hmm. speaking. Mm-hmm. Uh, good segment, Zach. Zach, the assistant GM mm. of ITM, actually asked me to hop, hop on one time, and I was just, I think I was, I didn't see it for like a couple days, and I felt bad. So Zach, if you're listening, which I know you are, felt bad, would have hopped on. So I don't know. Wait, what happened? DM me, I'll hop on. He he oh, DM me Fortnite. and was like, "Hey, you trying to play Fortnite?" <laughs> I oh, like, okay. I, I thought I you were talking about hop on ITM, and I was no. like, well, you are on that all the time, so that doesn't make any sense. No, no, no. No, okay. we don't yeah, do guests on this show. Just David Ortiz and Sam. Sam. Why do I call him Sam? Sammy. Oh, Sammy. Yeah, maybe know, Cotillo. Maybe we'll some David Ortiz and Cotillo. Those are kind yeah, of my we'll bar. Have, we'll have Cotillo in here. Only right. people that have run to first base have had my park. I have That's sweet it. swings and sweet swings and have had dads at some point in their lives. Yep. I just got to see, I just got to see a swing and then, then we'll talk about coming on here. All right. Thanks everybody for listening. Follow us on the socials at ITM underscore pod on Instagram and on Twitter. You can find me at Joey Capone. You can find him at Scott Neville 46, like Jacoby Ellsbury. Remember him. Mm -hmm. And a uh, big thank you to prize picks, the exclusive daily fantasy partner of the CLNS Media Network, and we will see you back here after this thrilling series at America's second most beloved ballpark. Enjoy the off day. For Scott Neville, I'm Joey Capone. Go Sox, kid. Blue Boston. Awesome.